Hey guys, we're down here in Thibodeau, Louisiana with uh, one of Louisiana's more successful college football coaches, Tim Rebo. Uh, Nichols, Tim, thanks for having us today. Shock, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah, great to see you. And uh, Tim suddenly is entering his uh, 10th year <laughs> at Nichols. Time flies by, especially when you're winning, right? Yeah, we were just talking the other day. It seemed like we just got here, you know, and uh, the program was kind of in disarray a little bit, and we just got in and went to work and had a little success and built this thing up, and already here we are year 10. You've had numerous uh, Southland Conference championships. You've had numerous trips to the playoffs. You did both of those uh, last year. So as we're in spring here, how are things uh, looking for the Colonels? Well, it's good. La last year was a good year. It was, it was a tough start to the beginning of the year. I thought we had a good, a good football team. Uh, those guys proved that we got better each week. And when conference came along, we were ready to go. And uh, to win that conference championship outright, to win the third one, was really sweet for our players. Uh, in fact, like two weeks ago, we got the rings. They had the ring ceremony at the basketball game. It was kind of exciting. Uh, but then you got to put that to bed, and now it's on to the next one. And, and our guys know that. Uh, we've been working hard. We're already starting our third week of spring practice. Uh, you've got your quarterback back. That's yes. a great place to start, right? Yes. You know, over the years, everywhere we've been, anytime you had a returning quarterback, uh, you had a chance for some success the next year. And, and that was in any league I was in. And it was when, when teams had a quarterback back, they had a chance to be pretty good. So Pat McQuaid had a good year for us last year. Uh, he's getting better every day. Uh, we actually got him back for two more years, so we're kind of excited about him. Awesome. Uh, you took him uh, from a JUCO, right, Mississippi? Yes, he, he was a transfer. He's from uh, right outside of Cleveland, Ohio, and he was at Mississippi, uh, uh, transferred down to us, and we went, saw him, and convinced him to stay down south. <laughs> Good stuff. And you got both of your leading rushers back uh, as well. Yeah, a little, a little bit different. Uh, we like to run the football. I still believe that things are happening up front. You win up front on the offense and defensive lines. And last year was a unique year. Uh, Jalen Spears was the conference player of the year. Uh, and uh, Colin Guggenheim was a first team running back. So both of our running backs won the first team, which does not happen very often. Uh, Guggenheim. It, He's kind of a throwback. How would you describe the way he runs? Yeah, he, he's a tough, hard-nosed runner. You know, he was an option quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, we've had him for a couple years now. He just gets better. Uh, I think as the game gets gets going, he's better in that fourth quarter. He's stronger. And as the year gets going on, he's just a tough, powerful runner. And your receivers, I think you lost a couple of guys maybe uh, in, in, on that aspect of things. Who, who's going to catch the ball this year? Yeah, we lost David Robinson uh, last year who had, had a really good year for us. Uh, he's, he's moving on, and we got some guys. I mean, we got some guys ready to step up. Quincy Brown is one of them. Christian McNeese, who was a, a kid who came on late for us last year, can do some things for us. Terry Matthews, I got some good slot receivers, I think, and be able to play for us. So I'm, I'm excited about our young receivers. And on the defensive side of the ball, how's that shaping up for you? Well, I, I think we're good. We got a lot of returning starters. It's led by Hayden Shaheen, a uh, linebacker out of Catholic High, Baton Rouge. It's just he's been our bell cow. He's the leader. He's the ring leader on defense. Him and Quinton Sharkey. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty going to be pretty good up front. And uh, in the back end, Tyler Martin is a returning uh, All-American for us in the secondary. This level of football, uh, it seems like maybe more people will, or a few more people will gravitate to it because the F's, uh, FBS level, there's so many changes and things maybe that some people are turned off by. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to sound simplistic, but is it still football in its purest form, so to speak? Yeah, I, I really think it is. It's, you know, I think everybody loves to play the game at any level. You talk, you know, there's some things happening at the with the transfer porter and, and the NIL, but it, it's football. The majority of guys just want to play football. They're happy to be here. Uh, I think you know, in today's society, you, you see what makes the news is the guys transferring and the guys getting paid the big money. But for the majority of guys, it's still good old fashioned college football. Yeah. I was thinking about that too with the coaches, like the coaches that get fired and they walk away with millions. That is like that percentage. I mean, you know, coaches across the country, there's some guy at some junior college in nowhere America today getting up and you know, coaching this game. Yeah, because you love the game and you yeah. do it for the right reasons. And I, and I think that in the coaching aspect and I think that from the player aspect, that there's way more majority of, of players today are playing for the love of the game. Yeah, uh, but as you and I were talking off camera, there's challenges everywhere. 
No matter what level you're coaching at, there's yeah, from from with. the NFL to the FBS to the highest levels to where we are right here. I think the biggest thing, Jacques, why we have been successful and we talk about it all the time is we understand who we are and we understand what we are and what we have here. We have great place, we have great facility, and you win with good people. You know. Like you said, uh, when I came here, the last time I came here, this big practice facility was not here. It uh, looks great. Yeah, winning winning does a lot. We <laughs> have the, the new book vault building we've been in for a couple of years now. And then phase two was our covered practice facility. It's not, it's not fully enclosed, uh, but got the roof over your head. It keeps us out of the weather, out of the lightning, uh, out of the heat. We talked about the dog days of summer. Uh, it's great to have, you know, you, in football, you're on such a time schedule, you know, and, and right now we don't have to worry about if there's lightning or if it's rain, where we're going to practice, where we're going to go. We can get our practice done and our players love it. I remember when uh, Jim Hazlitt was the head coach of the Saints way back and they came here for training camp in Thibodeau and they didn't have an indoor, you know. Right, right. So they had to move. <laughs> you, you, you would think it would be a, a great place. You know, we, we have the camps here in the summer. Uh, we do have the, the Louisiana Line Camp that's been for 30 plus years. We do have the Manning Passing Academy is here, which is great for us, and the Saints. So it, I'll, we, they know how to host uh, multiple players and, and teams on this campus. And the Mannings played a role too in uh, getting this all funded and taken yes, care of. Yes, yes, they helped us. You know, they've been they've been good to us over the years. We love having the camp here and the you know twelve hundred plus kids here every year and the coaches and uh, uh, the Shaw uh, Turf Group uh, stepped up along with the Manning Passing Academy helped us put this turf down in the indoor. Awesome. Uh, your schedule, I took a look at it. it. It appears to be ambitious. I mean, you're <laughs> you're going to Louisiana Tech and you're going to LSU. Uh, you come to Baton Rouge twice. Let's start with uh, with the LSU game and how that came about. Yeah, you know, we were scheduled to play them. You know, I think we're the only school in Louisiana that has not played LSU yet. We were scheduled to play them in the COVID year, uh, and that one got canceled and got pushed. And uh, athletic director Jonathan Terrell went to work, I think, with Verge Osbury and, uh, the, to get us back on the schedule. You know, the schedules are made so far in advance. So, you know, a couple of years ago, we knew this one was coming. It would be exciting for our players. Uh, it'll be exciting for our fans to be in Baton Rouge. It's the old thing, the old storyline we always talk about, I guess, you know, the opportunity to play in Tiger Stadium and all that. Uh, does that mean something to those guys? I, I, I think it will. You know, we, we've been to big venues before. You know, we, we played the Georgias. We played the Texas A&Ms. We played around this, the country in the big stadiums. But I think it is something special to probably play the state school, you know, in your home area. So I think it'll be big for our players. Uh, Brian Kelly, have you spoken with him? Got to know him at all? Uh, yeah, just, just a little bit, just through the coaching ranks and through the camps and stuff, yes. Got you. Uh, and Southern, that should be a uh, – that's kind of what you want to see, right? State teams that have had success going head to head. Yeah, new coach Ter Terrence Graves is over there, going to do a fantastic job. You know, Nichols and Southern back in the years, even when I was here in the 90s as an assistant, that was a big rivalry game. And then for whatever reason, it kind of went away, and it was good, again, to get them back on the schedule. And that's how it should be. You've got five home games. That yes, you're it, uh, it's a rare in FCS this year, a 12 game schedule. Uh, so we, we'll play seven on the road, and we get to play five at home this year. Got you. How's the Southern Conference looking? Look, I, I think every year. It's good football. It's tough. It's good competition. I think it's wide open. Um, you know, the, the teams in the state, you know, with Frank Selfo's done at Southeast and Northwest and McNeese, you know, uh, go to compete against the Texas schools. I, I like our chances. But, again, you better be ready every week to, to strap it on and play some good football. Yeah. Uh, just the other day I went to uh, – McNeese to visit with Will Wade, uh, obviously the basketball coach there, and just talking about your conference and everything. It is, um, you know, we, we all know what LSU is, and LSU will always be LSU. But, you know, I, I think it's important. You know, I'm a fan of Louisiana. I'm a fan of Nichols and Southeastern right. and Northwestern and McNeese. And I like to see all these programs, and I want to see them all, you know, make it for years to come, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm a state guy. You know, I've been 35 plus years in the state of Louisiana from high school to college, uh, homegrown, and, and we love it here. And I want everybody to have success. It's just some of them, you don't want to have them on the nights that you're going to play them. And, and, and you look what's happening right now in basketball, and, and it's bringing some notoriety, notoriety to the state. You know, our basketball team won last night uh, and, and is going to play again and try to get to that conference finals to get to the big dance. Uh, just a throwback. You mentioned that a while ago. You almost beat Georgia that year, right? I mean, yeah. you were, <laughs> that yeah. was Kirby's first. Was that his first game? I think it was his first season. Or it was. Something it like was that. his first season. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was our second year here. We went to Georgia. 
uh, had them down 26-24 with a chance to, to get a stop and get the ball back. But uh, that was good. And, you know, when you look back at those, that, that's the kind of things that built us along the way. We, you know, that first year we won three games, and then we won five games, and we won six games. But playing teams like that and games like that and showing you can compete at that level, that was huge for us. Yeah. I remember watching that game for you guys. Uh who was the bit? Was the kid from Lutcher? Um, Sully Lesh. Sully Lesh. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. He played yeah. a role in that game and yeah. Yeah. everything. All right. Well, um, just tell me about Thibodeau. Tell me about this area and uh, and its love for football and the support that you're getting here. Yeah. Over the years, the fans have been fantastic. You know, I mean, uh, I think anywhere you go, uh, uh, people like winning. Obviously, they were they were starving for a winner. Uh, they come out and support. Our Saturday is here incredible. When you come, the, the game day experience uh, again. Knowing who you are, our, our, our stadium doesn't seat 90,000 people. That's fine, but we fill it up, we pack it, we have the tailgating. The fans have been fantastic support uh, all around the local area, you know, all around uh, uh, Morgan City, uh, the, all of Lafouche, Homa, uh, the River Parishes. Just embrace this football team. Yeah, well, it goes back to McNeese the other day when I went to go see Coach Way. They built an arena that's 4,500, it's intimate, everything's right. like like I talked to him. They used to say that um, Fenway Park, Boston Red Sox, was the best place to go see a game because it was 33,000. It was always full. It always looked like a party. That's what you're going for. Yeah, and I think for years it kind of got away. It was built the bigger, bigger, bigger. Now I think in baseball they've proven that. Let's, let's build the 40, 45,000 and pack it every week. Uh, that's what you love. And look, we, I, I love college athletics. Uh, I love this area. I, we go to our baseball team is have us off to a great start again this year after winning the conference championship. Our women's basketball. I think the great thing about this university is we all support each other. We all go to the events, and it's it's close enough. It's intimate. Uh, that's what we really enjoy about it. And, and the streaming too, right? I mean, the ESPN pluses and whatnot. I mean, you can watch a lot of your uh, your your games not on the traditional television but i think a lot of people are cutting the cord <laughs> you know with that and now you can go to a sports bar and and you know they've got it piped in where you can watch yeah last night you know watching yesterday watching our women play and, and win in the tournament for the first time in a couple of years and, and on espn plus and then putting the game on last night we'll have it on again tonight to see if we can make it to the finals all right well this guy's got to get to practice is there anything else i should have asked you about before you go here no just just coming up we're already into uh, starting the third week of spring our spring game is going to be on march 20 27th on Wednesday night uh, we do it at six o'clock and try to get some fans out to see the the 2024 version of the Nichols Colonel so come out and support all right Tim Rebo thanks for having us today thank you very much man appreciate it